Hi, my name is Dr. Christopher Vera. I'm a spine surgeon here at the Shriners Hospital for Children in the Twin Cities. Spina bifida is a simple term used to describe a collection of what we call neural tube defects that occur very early on in pregnancy. Around 26 to 28 days gestation, as the spinal cord forms, a certain portion of that for spinal cord does not close in the back of the spine and subsequently the child is born with a what we call a neural tube defect or spina bifida which is an opening either in the higher portion, the middle portion, or the lower portion of the back of the spine. It occurs in about four to five per 10,000 births. Okay. Um, we do know that it can be diagnosed before birth, and that's usually with a special test called an alpha fetoprotein level, so that most parents are aware of the diagnosis prior to birth. We also have a pretty good theory as to what causes it, and we do know that we recommend uh, any woman of childbearing age to take a folate supplement, especially if they are or are thinking about becoming pregnant. All right, so the defect may be noted uh, either before or during or shortly after birth. Now the urgent treatment is to have that defect, which is in the back part of the spine, closed within 24 hours of life. Individuals who have spina bifida can also develop swelling on the brain or hydrocephalus, and that in the vast majority of cases does require a shunt placement in order to help reduce that swelling um, uh, so that it doesn't become a problem later on. We typically see children here when they're very young. Uh, I can't stress enough that it does involve a multidisciplinary team to care for children with spina bifida. We know that they will have neurosurgical issues such as the shunt, we know that they will have urologic issues. We know that they will have orthopedic issues. We know that they will require bracing and therapy. They will require physical therapy, occupational therapy, and social work support. So our treatment begins very early, and it may be something early on as simple as the use of a brace or a wheelchair. As children get older, uh, we begin to classify their function based on the level of their lesion. For example, if the spina bifida defect is high in the thoracic spine, in the top, uh, they would have a different set of functioning than somebody whose spina bifida defect is lower down in the tailbone. And that may be uh, a difference in terms of the ability to walk or the inability to walk, uh, and so on and so forth. Well, I'd say it's important to treat it early just for the number of issues that, we, that we've talked about. The neurosurgeons are going to have to monitor them for any change in their curvature of their spine or swelling in the brain. From an orthopedic standpoint, we need to see them early to see if we need to intervene for common orthopedic problems to include problems with their hips, contractures about the hips and knees, contractures about the feet. Now, not all children may require surgery, but they certainly do need a very early and a thorough evaluation. Our urologists also need to see them as well because we know that individuals with spina bifida will have urologic issues that need to be managed very closely. Uh, now, about 50% of individuals will develop some form of scoliosis. Now, not all of that requires surgery, but if it gets severe enough, we need to manage that surgically. We also discuss surgery in order to keep the hips in the appropriate position. We also discuss surgery to help alleviate knee and hip flexion contractures. We talk about surgery to straighten, for example, a club foot in order to allow children to wear braces. Um, but every one of these children will also require the physical and occupational as well as bracing support as they grow older in life. It does require a comprehensive team, and, it, and here at the Shriners House for Children in the Twin Cities, we have all of those team members present during our spina bifida clinic days. And we have our neurosurgeons, the urologists, us from orthopedics, along with our whole host of ancillary staff, such as our orthotics and prosthetics department, our physical and occupational therapists, and our wheelchair specialists as well. So it is a comprehensive program that we would thoroughly encourage if you are not, in, your child has spina bifida and is not involved in one, 
uh, I would encourage you to seek out one of those comprehensive clinics.